right, folks, this is it. The fight of the century that you've all been waiting for. Bigger than Alien versus Predator. Bigger than Freddy versus Jason. Bigger than Kramer versus Kramer. In the green corner, standing ridiculously tall. He's got nuclear breath that's even worse in the morning. Some people see him as a savior. Tokyo sees him as a menace. It's God -za. In the orange corner, weighing a ridiculous amount of bananas when you really think about it. The Rilla from Manila, the ape who's escaped. The champion of Skull Island, Kong! Let's get ready to get into it! So Godzilla vs. Kong is the sequel to the two Godzilla films that have been out already, Godzilla and Godzilla King of the Monsters, and also a sequel to Kong Skull Island, where we see the two titans of terror teaming up together to take on each other, mostly, for the most part, of the film. Somewhat. I mean, the title kind of really tells you all you need to know about this film. Yes, yeah, sure, there are storyline elements that get mixed in because there is a human element involved in these kaiju movies. There always is a human element. And invariably, the human element in these kaiju movies sucks. It kind of sucked in Godzilla after the point that Brian Cranston got killed off. It kind of sucked in Kong Skull Island, except for the fact that Brie Larson and Tom Hiddleston were really great to watch. And I'll be honest, I don't think I've seen enough of Godzilla King of the Monsters to know whether the human element in that sucked. But other than Millie Bobby Brown, guessing kind of sucked. But you need these human elements in these films to drive the plot line forward because the kaiju in these films are not going to be enough to just progress the plot because they can't actively help tell the story themselves. And in Godzilla vs Kong we're treated to not one but two, potentially three different human element strands going because there's one that's following Kong, there's one that's following Godzilla, and there's one that's following the Apex Corporation. And that's something that kind of bothered me a little bit because this shady Apex Corporation that's happening that needs a power source from Hollow Earth, the birthplace of all Titans. Aside from the fact that the evil corporate leader is obviously evil and corporate and a leader, he's essentially trying to give humans their own form of defense against titan attacks without having to rely on one of said titans who could go rogue and just destroy an entire city, an entire continent if he wanted to at any point point. Like, Godzilla is a literal nuclear-powered wrecking machine, and they're putting their trust in him to help protect them from other animals and creatures and apex predators like him. I can kind of see where he's coming from. You want something that you can rely on, that you're in control of, that you don't have to rely on an outside element to come and protect you. Aside from the fact that he's trying to actively wipe out Godzilla and Titans in the process of doing it, I can kind of get behind what he's trying to do. If this has gone down a slightly different path, it's essentially the start of Pacific Rim. And sure, okay, Godzilla can't really be reasoned with and can't really have empathy, but is that an excuse to try and take him out in the process? Like, I don't think so. But that is where my main man Kong comes into the picture. Kong does have empathy. Kong can be reasoned with. Kong talks with the little signing deaf girl in here. And that's like the only human element in this that didn't suck. Because the little deaf girl that's talking to Kong is the method of communication between him and the other people that are trying to follow him into Hollow Earth to get this power source that they need, supposedly. Plus, Kong has opposable thumbs and is therefore higher up the evolutionary ladder and is able to use crude tools. And that, my friends, is why Kong is theoretically better. And moving on from that, I think that the fight structure in this film really actually worked. You want to have this first initial bout 
because that's what you've paid your money to see. And the fact that that kind of ends a little bit surreptitiously means that they go away, they regroup, they come back, they figure each other out, they've got new things. After going to Hollow Earth, Kong has his axe that he finds, which essentially means he's kind of gone on the same journey of discovery as Thor did in Infinity War. He went to this far off distant place, it's only really spoken about in Legends, to get an axe. But it's a cool axe. It's still cool. And it builds up in between these fights. And that's what Batman v Superman kind of really lacked for me, is that there's only a Batman versus Superman at one point. So what I'm essentially saying is Godzilla vs Kong is a better versus movie than Batman vs Superman. That might be a controversial opinion, but it's an opinion nonetheless. And what that first fight does really well on the big ships is to show how Kong isn't as physically strong as Godzilla. There isn't as many things that he can do that Godzilla can do. And that's why he's kind of at a little bit of a disadvantage. And that finding that out and then going away, regrouping, coming back with new strategies and new tactics and a new axe really helps build that up because you're looking forward to seeing that rematch with what he can now do. So essentially, as I could have predicted, Godzilla vs Kong is a great kaiju movie watching these two titans fight, which is incredible to watch. It's very visually pleasing because there's no confusion at any point over what you're watching. And the sense of scale that you have at these points is incredible. You really get the sense that these two creatures that are fighting are absolutely massive by comparison to everything else around them. Yeah, sure, the collateral damage and destruction that happens is astronomical, but it does give you that great sense of scale and strength and destruction that these two are just not even noticing. And yeah, there were one or two moments in this film where I was watching it and I genuinely felt like this whole film could be turned into a ride at Universal Studio. There were certain shots where you were following things that were moving around and it all felt like it could be one of these simulator 3D visual rides that you go on where there's animatronics and screens and 3D and everything happening around you. Someone literally needs to turn this into a ride. I would pay good money to go on it. If anything drags this movie down, it's following the storylines of the people that are doing stuff in the background. None of them are really that relatable. None of them really add that much to the film. So with that in mind, Godzilla vs Kong, Zilla v Rilla gets three and a half stars from me. It's definitely a fun watch. It wasn't as lackluster as I was kind of half expecting it to be. I don't know if it's my love of Pacific Rim coming through in this film, watching everything go down, but maybe that influenced it a little bit. Overall though, it's just fun to watch. There's a lot that they go into about the lore and mythology of these Titans, how long they've been around for, where they all came from, and there's a couple of turns in there that aren't exactly unexpected, but they're turns nonetheless, which I also enjoyed watching. So Godzilla vs Kong, or Zilla v Rilla, Smackdown in downtown, as I've been referring to it as. Have you seen it? What did you think about it? Whose side were you backing during the film? Are you a Godzilla or a Kong person? If they made a sequel, would you watch it? What would you want to see happen? All comments are welcome in the comments section below. Let's talk nerdy. Don't forget that our podcast, Back to the Reviewture, is still being released on all podcast players. Head over to your favourite podcast player, try out an episode. If you like it, follow and subscribe and leave us a good review. And if you enjoyed what you've seen here and you would like to see some more, you can click right here to subscribe and see some more funky fresh videos from yours truly. And until that point, I'm still repping my guy Kong. I don't know, maybe it's because he's had more of a beard in this film, looked a little bit more grizzled and grey in the beard. Maybe that's why I side with Kong. 
a bit more. I don't know. 